This episode, we are going to discuss about the leaks that's been happening at Microsoft Center with Phil Spencer. Stay tuned for more info. Let's start the show. Be strong. Hello, folks, and welcome to the show. I have my friend Christian here. Howdy, howdy. And we are here to discuss about the leaks that's been happening at Microsoft. Now, looking at The Verge, where we got these information leaked from, and I'll put the, the, the link down below so you guys can check out the article. Um, we having, Xbox is actually having a new gen console that's coming out in 2028. Its, it's, it's code name is Brooklyn. Xbox Series X Refresh. And this one is going to be the most powerful Xbox ever. Now, arguably all digital. Mm -hmm. I thought Xbox Series X was the, the S. powerful X. Yes, the Series X was the uh, next Xbox powerful console. So now we got another one called Brooklyn that's coming out that's going to be more powerful than the Series X. And it's not going to run discs. And it's discless. So it's going to be digital just like PlayStation doing for Slim and Pro. Nice. So folks, this one is going to be called Brooklyn. Brooklyn will deliver 4K Gen 9 console gaming with more internal storage, faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, and more immersive controller and beautiful redesign that elevates the all-digital experience of Xbox ecosystem. Giving our fans more to love, the beautiful innovation new design, more internal storage for gaming, which is going to be 2 terabytes, which is that's pretty cool. A USB-C front port with powerful delivery, all new, more immersive controllers, same great price for four ninety nine. Ridiculous. Amazing, You're but ridiculous. I mean, I just bought my Series S, which is what, Series S has only been out for a year and a half, two years now, something like that. Right. And I paid $300 for it, you know, or I could have spent the extra $200 to get the Series X, but I didn't. But here we go. The next gen console will be the same price as the current gen console because there hasn't been a price drop yet no. by any means. No, no. It stayed consistent. And I, I don't think there's ever going to be a price drop. But yeah, it is kind of funny that you're going to take the next gen console, Brooklyn, that's supposed to be more powerful than Xbox Series X and charge it for the same price as you did for an S. That's incredible. That's really interesting. So it's update technology on this Brooklyn is all new South Bridge to modernize IO and stability efforts, which is going to have a Wi-Fi 6E radio for better throughput latency and interference migration. And then a B2 5.2 radio for improved accessory experience which means you're, you, you'll have better links with your controllers or headsets or whatever you have, which I think the controllers and headsets on the Series X is perfect the way it is because it's linked. Uh, granted, it's not, it's not uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Uh, it was Bluetooth with the controllers, but it's not Wi-Fi based like, like some consoles have. Uh, uh, like uh, PlayStation doesn't have Bluetooth connectivity, but it has Wi-Fi link to where. Well, no, it does have Bluetooth because you Bluetooth through the through, through the the controllers, but um, you can't access other outside companies. Like if you have a third-party company um, headset that is Bluetooth, the PlayStation Five won't accept it because they don't accept. It's not equal friendly for the PlayStation ecosystem so it won't accept third-party vendors for outside headsets or other controllers but uh it'd be interesting to see if that is the same with the brooklyn as they would call it the improve uh um, system is to reduce the psu power by 15 percent so it's lowering its power consumption 
by 15 percent that's pretty crazy let's go green yes yeah <laughs> let's save the earth uh new low power standard mode is 20 percent of current xss standby mode so when it's in standby mode it's going to reduce more than 20 percent of power so it's not going to take that much when you put it on standby mode and i don't think this one Series X, you can put it on standby mode, can you? Yeah, you can. You, you can do that with the Series X and the Series S. It's just, I don't know. With my Series S, it seems to have issues when I leave it on standby mode. It'll just disconnect from the internet, and then when I go to get back on, it'll be like, you're not connected to the internet, and I have to shut it down completely and turn it back on. I don't know if that's an issue you'll have with the X, but that's an issue I'm dealing with the S. Wow. So... Increased use of PCR on housing to 30%, 100% recyclable packaging. Well, well, we don't care about that one. Once again, they're just throwing go green. Yeah, this is one of go green for the planet. But the next thing that is very interesting that also came in a leak is a controller called Sabo, the new Xbox controller. And this is supposed to be the world's best controller now playing on screen near you. And it's going to be play anywhere. Xbox Wireless 2, direct to cloud, and Bluetooth 5.2. It's going to have seamless pair and switch. New uh, mobile app features. See pair devices and cloud. Managing is going to manage devices and accessories. Immersion is to feel the game. Precision haptic feedback, VCR, uh, VCA, excuse me, haptic double as as speakers, and the uh, quickness buttons and thumb back, thumbsticks. Now, okay, now if you don't understand about what they're talking about as the VCA haptic double as speakers, if you look at the bottom of your Xbox Series X or X or whichever Xbox you have. You notice that the grippers are right here at the bottom of your hand, right? So they are going to put speakers there, which I think is not going to be the best idea because if you're holding the controller, you're muffling the speaker better, 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 less the sense. So you think, Christian? That's what I assume. So, I mean, unless they're using some sort of technology, it's supposed to use the acoustics of your hand, just like when you cup, cup, something to your ear or you, ha you put your hands behind the speaker or your phone so you can get some some better sound quality but other than that i don't see it working out too well i i don't i don't see that working out as well too if you're going to put the speakers down at the bottom of the grippers while you're holding the control but then again i digress we'll see what the what, how it, the design with the final look of the design will be when 2028 shows up Okay, so you do have the do good, feel good, rechargeable and swappable batteries, recyclable material and less uh, re resistance and repair and disassemble. So it's something like the X, uh, PlayStation where you can take parts and interchange them when they uh, get worn out or, you know, you get the, what do you call the drift stick? Oh God! Yeah, I hate that stupid drift stick. It's just ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, when you're running straight, for hours on end in whatever game you're playing and for some reason you set your controller down and your character is still walking straight forwards or are you just trying to stay still and stay hidden and your guy just starts walking forwards for no reason it's the worst I absolutely hate it yeah I think this is going to be um, it, it's, it's something new that Xbox is gonna push up I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they are trying to do something new but I think they should re really rethink on this design of this controller because some of it is, if you look at some of this stuff up here, folks, some of it is already on the Series X and some of it I don't think needs to be on the next gen console, especially if you're going to uh, say this is going to be the world's best controller. Um, uh, to me, I don't think it's going to be that much of a best one that you get already on the Series X, other than the fact that they're going to put speakers, speakers on the grips. I, I don't know. I mean, they, they got some good stuff up here, you know, with the, the sustainability 
do good, feel good, rechargeable, swappable batteries, the recycled materials, and less resin. That less resin's a big thing for me because I've had my other controllers just start falling apart because my hands get hot and the resin starts to just reactivate and it just starts to peel away the rubber from the controller, which is just absolutely annoying. But the ability to repair and disassemble your controller, maybe it'll be a bit more customizable. Well, I can I can agree with you on that one. But the, as far as the rechargeable and swapping and swappable batteries, yeah, no, you can already do that there. on the Series yeah, X. Yeah, I have a charge of rechargeable batteries in my Series X, and whenever that goes down, I put it in, recharge it, and wait till it recharges. But the good thing about it is the Xbox X or One X are the, the controllers for that console it is integratable with the Series X. So if ever the Series X controller needs to be recharged. I can go over to the Xbox One X controller and use it on the Series X. So it uh, swapping the batteries, you already been doing that. Now, if you want to impress me, then make it a built-in rechargeable battery like the PlayStation Five, and just connect it to your console and then charge it up like that instead of swapping out the batteries. We need. I mean, Xbox. If you're gonna go into the future, get rid of swapping the batteries. I mean, what what good is your go green stance if you're just constantly going to be like, well, continue to buy these AA batteries, slap them until they die, or you can get a battery pack, and if you're lucky, you'll get you know anywhere from four to eight hours of gameplay out of that battery pack if you're lucky, and then on top of that, if that battery pack will have a long enough lifespan, because I've had people tell me that the lifespan of that battery is only good for two years max, which right. I don't. I, Depending on how much you play games, two years is actually not a long time because some people spend eight hours a day on their console, you know, as, as annoying to some people that might be and as amazing as it is for others. So you're going to constantly be swapping out your batteries or swapping out your battery pack and then by the end of six months to a year and be like, well, I thought this was going to last longer. Yeah, I mean... I'm already swapping batteries. I'm already taking uh, you know, rechargeable batteries and recharging them and doing all kind of stuff. But if you're gonna go to the near future of uh, of gaming, then uh, yeah, let's 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 put built-in batteries and rechargeable batteries as at that like they do on PlayStation. I think that's the next step that they should do. Um, so the next gaming league we're gonna get off of the about the Xbox. Uh, new next gen console we're going to talk about this is very interesting topic right here and it's i think it's a little bit scary for those who own nintendo and this is uh microsoft gaming ceo phil spencer would really like to buy nintendo someday in an august 2020 email to the top two microsoft marketing executives spencer wrote that nintendo is the prime asset for us in gaming and that getting Nintendo will be a career move movement, and I honestly believe a good move for both companies. Wow, that is a big, bold statement yeah, right there. It's a there. tough pill to swallow for me. I think that if they do acquire uh, Nintendo, then Microsoft will be the new emperor of Star Wars. You, you know what I'm saying? They'll be like the Empire, where they're just Phil Spencer is Palpatine and Xbox consoles are Darth Vader. You know, where he just be like, Lord Darth Vader, kill Order 66, acquire Nintendo. I, that, that would kill it. That, that, would, that would kill it. I mean, because... You will have all these little minions that will be stormtroopers, and they just going out buying stuff. That's what that's what Xbox is doing. Xbox is buying all of these companies. You bought all these studios. You went and bought Bethesda and bought them for billions of dollars, on it despite that you didn't want Starfield to be on PlayStation. So that's why you ran out and bought Bethesda. With that thought, though, that may have been the best move they could have done 
with Starfield, to be honest, because Starfield was supposed to release much earlier. And as we know, Bethesda's had an issue with releasing games on time for the past couple years to begin with. And then when they release the game, it has all these issues. Not to say that Starfield has issues, because it totally does. Every game's going to have issues. Right. But they had more time to work on it. So they probably needed it. Well, it, but they, they had plenty of time to buy Bethesda. They had plenty of time to buy Bethesda before they even went into the the, the the acquisition of buying Blizzard and Activision. You know, they had plenty of time to do it. I believe in my cold heart that they did this so they did not have to have Starfield on PlayStation. They wanted to make this exclusive only for Xbox. And I can understand because PlayStation plays this this out of they playbook too where they don't buy companies but they buy ips and they buy companies to buy games to make it solely exclusive for playstation like you got you know spider-man 2 you know so but but the thing about it is playstation buy ips xbox is buying studios and now you want to acquire nintendo you want to buy nintendo and nintendo it's like it's not like nintendo is harder for money they sitting on a pile of cash Nintendo's making a lot of money with Mario games, and they're making a lot of money with Zelda. So, they don't need to be bought. But it seems like Phil has his heart set on buying Nintendo. No, it definitely sounds like it's a goal to me. And I can't imagine what he would even be able to offer Nintendo to begin with, by any means. Like, I was running numbers in my head and just thinking about, like, well, if, if they did this, if they did that, like, I don't think there's anything they could do to get that to happen. But if, but if they do happen to acquire Nintendo, this would be the first ever in history of Xbox that they're going into the field of handheld console. Because if you look at it, that Xbox have never created a handheld game like PlayStation has with PSP and PS Vita and now PS Portal. Now you got Xbox. If they acquire Nintendo, this would be the first ever handheld game console ever. And that's a new realm, a new era, for, a new world for them to acquire if they acquire Nintendo. And that would be something new that... I think Phil Spencer and the Xbox team will play with because that's something they never thought to indulge in if they do get Nintendo. And to them, this is be a new playground, a new era for them to understand what a handheld game is all about in the hands of consumers to walk around and play. And they may, may improve if they do take Nintendo. They may be able to improve Nintendo in, a, in, in the aspects to link it to the xbox to where you not only can play nintendo games and all that stuff but you can play xbox games and you can link it and not be tethered to the xbox like you do the playstation portal mm -hmm. okay have to link it to the playstation 5 because it's not a dedicated handheld okay i don't care what anybody says on youtube about how great this portal thing is. It's not a dedicated handheld. And if PlayStation wants to go, they need to go back to the drawing board and do like they did with the PSP and the PS, PS Vita. Mm -hmm. Okay? Absolutely. Not link it to where you have to be tethered to a PlayStation. So if Xbox does this and they get it, and they get into that handheld business, I hope that they will make a Nintendo that is dedicated service like it is as a on a standalone console, a standalone handheld, but also could be able to play Xbox games at the same time. We'll have update graphics, new hardware, better software, to where it can play some of these gen. Because have you looked at Mortal Kombat 1 on PlayStation? I mean, I mean on Nintendo Switch? It looks Not terrible. Ooh. Like, they showed a clip with... Uh, Johnny Cage takes his glasses off and his eyeballs are about to pop out of his socket. <laughs> he looked like one of those 19, what was that, 1970 or 1980 cartoons. Oh, you man. know, like when, you know, when uh, Tom, uh, Tom and Jerry cartoon, when Jerry slammed his window on, on Tom's neck and his eyeballs pop out. That is, it, the graphics on that thing look terrible on the Nintendo Switch. And they have the gold of the nerve to charge 70 bucks with something like that. So if Xbox acquires Nintendo, 
that is what is going to need it's going to need that improvement it's going to need to where it is sellable it is workable and it is playable so that way if you want to charge somebody 70 dollars, they have nothing to complain about because it's a good game and it looks good on a handheld game right no and it's it's with the whole mobile gaming aspect you know xbox does have this uh this glass app or it's a uh, Right now, I don't even think it's called the Glass app anymore, but it's just regular old Xbox app. And you can access, like, your captures and your profile. You can join parties, talk to your friends and stuff like that. But you also have this launch console ability where you can essentially mirror your console on your phone. So you can play on your phone without having to have your TV on, your console's still going to run, your console's going to be running the game, right. and your phone is just going to be your TV screen. Right. And you can set it up to where your your controller is linked to your phone so that you can actually continue playing, quote-unquote, on the go, but you have to be on the same wireless internet because if you try and do this on like just your regular old service provider it doesn't seem to work out it'll drop and then the moment it drops your game stops it disconnects and you have to restart everything pretty much right. so it's like they kind of already have their toes dipped in the field and they just stopped trying to improve on it because they realized it already had issues right. and there's no point in trying to turn on your phone to play the game unless you're strictly trying to play mobile games right. so as you said they're trying to get into that field of mobile gaming because they already tried a little bit, but they just said, eh, it's not really working. We're just going to forget that ever happened for now. Well, I think that it, it, I think that will be one of the next step that Microsoft would do, because once they do acquire Nintendo and they get that handheld game, it will give them that little taste of going into mobile because they know there's potential money there. There's, there's a lot of marketing in mobile gaming, and they know that phones sell, like Samsung, mm -hmm. iPhones, they sell. They got their own phones. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so they looking to probably, they probably will be looking to buy or acquire those IPs for those mobile phone games. But, you know, but who's not to say that that won't happen? Because it looks like I said, X Xbox, Microsoft is buying everyone out. And this is what I can tell you, folks, it's not going to stop here because we're not done with what they are acquiring to buy. The emails also reveal as part of the of the trench leak of documents from the FTC versus Microsoft lawsuit, one executive, Takashi, asked Spencer and Chris in an email titled Random Thoughts About Microsoft Isn't Finding Acquisition Targets Like Nintendo a More Attractive Way to Increase a Consumer Exposure? And relevance at the time, Microsoft was in discussion to acquire TikTok. TikTok of all apps, TikTok. I don't even know how they would do that. What in the world would you need with TikTok? Just money, I guess. You know, have constant videos, constant views. The only thing you'd get from it. And I don't see any other purpose that Microsoft would have for TikTok. I I I, I would see it's not even a gaming. Exactly. It's, it's just an, a media app that everyone just talk trash on or do, do weird stuff on. But it's, it's, it's interesting that Phil Spencer was even acquiring the one TikTok. What's next? He's going to buy X, a.k.a. Twitter, uh, Facebook. I mean, what else is he going to Is he going to buy YouTube? If that's the case, if you're going to buy TikTok, you might as well go ahead and buy everyone else. So see, this is why I say, folks, Microsoft are the new empire. Phil Spencer is Palpatine, and he's ordering 66. He is buying everybody. Microsoft has deep pockets. They are buying everybody. They leave a no stone unturned. And like it's, it, it, it's endless possibility for them to, to, to not say, hey, we don't want something. If we see it, we like it, we want it, we'll buy it. That's their motto. And it's, it, it, you know, I would think because they bought all these studios because they have 
a rival was PlayStation. They want to make PlayStation corner. You know, they're trying to cower them into the corner to where they have no one else to buy games or, or get games from. But it seems like they're going beyond that. It seems like Phil Spencer just doesn't want to stop with gaming, that he wants to go into the world of media and media apps where he wants to buy TikTok. Like, what purpose would TikTok... I mean, were you going to add TikTok to the Xbox now? I mean, people can basically download that on the Xbox, can they? I'm not sure about TikTok, but I know that there's multiple other apps that you can have on your Xbox that are specifically for you, like Discord, and uh, I, I can't even think of another one right now, but to where you can link all your gameplay so that everything that you do, there's video for it, you can have your chat going, you can get views, you can get some monetization going, but TikTok's a short video app, like, you know, you're only at the most a couple minutes, what are you going to do with that? Most people, they're streaming, they're streaming their games, they're not trying to be like, here's 30 seconds, that's what's on YouTube, that's what you got YouTube for, you know, you got YouTube shorts, you know, here's a little tutorial, and this is what the new thing that came out with the game today. You know, there's no real point. I don't. I don't see any point to have TikTok for Xbox. I. I. I don't. I don't. I don't see. It's got to be a money thing. It. It's. It's got. But what money thing? Microsoft has too much money. And like you said before, you can never. You know, at at some point, you'd be like, "Well, I want more money." You, you can. Know? You but you can have a limitation to what you want. But if you're going all out to just buy up everything. Then you 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 you're being you're showing off that you got money. That's what it is. You're showing off that you got money. We understand Microsoft. You got money, but acquiring TikTok, I can see Nintendo. I just can't see TikTok. Yeah, no, I just I can't see TikTok. Not at all. Even it, TikTok is not a, 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 unless they want to completely change the whole platform of it. To change it to what? How much can you change to that? That that, that tick, to me TikTok sucks. Okay, I don't they like got TikTok. TikTok trends for a reason. Well, yeah, <laughs> but they, I mean, it's just like you know, Twitter got changed to X, but mm -hmm. it still got psycho people on there. You Absolutely, know, posting stupid stuff. You know, and you get that on TikTok too. And like, I get my daughter to stop watching TikTok because. There's people who put damaging information or damaging situation to make other people want to do the same stuff that they do True. and don't know that it can harm someone or it could be a dangerous situation. And there's no regulation on TikTok. You can just post anything up there and it's like no limitation. Just like X, you can post anything. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you know, when what you call it bought TikTok, you know, he... Uh, I mean, when what you call it, bought uh, not TikTok, but uh, Twitter, and changed it to X. He uh, he unlocked, but everything has been put back on. You get porn on it if you want to, you know. People posting naked pictures of themselves up on 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 X now, and it's just like it's it went from worst to worst. It went from moderated to unmoderated. It went from, oh my God, to Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. really? Yeah, those you know? are two very different levels of statements right there. Oh my God, just it's, being shocked and startled to Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, that is too much. That is way too much. Yeah. It's like way... So, if Phil wants to go into this world of buying media... Then he's gonna go across the board, and I know if he does acquire TikTok, he's not gonna stop there. Like I said, Microsoft got billions and billions of dollars to shut out, and companies will be like, "Okay, we'll take it. We'll, you know, we'll sell. You buy, we sell." I'm surprised that they haven't tried to start anything with VR. To be honest, at this point, besides you know PC gaming, because VR is not taken off. It's it's not a techno it's a technology that is still new but it's not taken off as it's not being profitable enough for Xbox to look at it and say I want that because it's making money. You know, with all these acquisitions that he's he's buying, he's buying if you look at all the companies that he's buying, he's buying companies that's making money. 
You know what I'm saying? They're not going to spend billions of dollars on something that ain't making money. True. Hence, look at EA. Mm -hmm. He ain't buying EA because EA ain't making no money. And EA has a bad rep yeah. right now with them. Absolutely. So he's staying away from that. But he's buying companies that he knows are making money. So that's more money that can goes towards uh, Microsoft. Instead of Microsoft just only concentrating on Windows-based PCs, okay, he's going from PCs to gaming to gaming to Nintendo to Nintendo to media app. And then he's going to branch off from there. Because like I said, it, it won't be a problem when he'll start buying mobile phones. You know, getting IPs for mobile phones. Then going, you know, buying more like TikTok. You probably buy Facebook. You probably buy YouTube. And if he does buy Facebook, let's say hypothetically, Phil Spencer buy Facebook. He buys from Zuckerberg. Now he will be going into the realm of VR because VR is part of Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's part of Meta. Absolutely. Yeah. So now he's going to be dabbing into the into the <clears throat> world of VR, and then he's going to be like, "Wow, this is uh, something new." Let's see what we can work around and and get that acclimated with the Xbox ecosystem. So he'll probably mess around, test it, improve it, and then. But before he does that, he wants to look at all the other competitors and see what they're doing, like you know all the other VR companies that see if they are making profitable. And then he'll probably look at the 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 the, uh, the, the amount of money that. Meta Quest is making if it's skyrocketing a little bit and it's bringing say like another couple of millions maybe a hundred millions to Xbox then he might acquire it but if he buys Facebook aka Meta if he buys it and sees that Meta Quest is not making anything he can just kill it and say we're not going to make anything with it you know saying whatever remains on that system will remain you can be able to play you can be able to do online but we're not going to do anything because we don't see that being profitable mm -hmm. but if he does see that it's profitable and that the VR era is rising and is making money then he'll probably dip and dive into that one but he's not going to make a standalone VR for Xbox what he'll do is he'll acquire that company that is dealing with VR and merge it with the eco-friendly ecosystem of the Xbox so that's what I think he would do so, folks, we're going to cut it short um, because we're going 30 minutes. We don't want to try to do an hour of this. But I want you guys to let me know, what do you think of Phil Spencer taking over everything, just buying up everything? What do you think of his buying? Do you think he's the new empire? Do you think he's the new Palpatine to just take over the whole gaming universe and the gaming industry to dominate and just leave a small cornerstone for PlayStation to be the biggest and baddest in the industry. What do you think about the new Xbox Gen for the 2028 model? Do you think it's going to be the beast of a beast on top of the Series X? Please, I want to hear what you guys' thoughts and suggestions down in the comment below. I want to thank Christian for coming on the show again. It was great. Thank you. And um, I hope to see you guys on the next show. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, keep gaming.